Hi, my name is Mike Sewell and welcome to another 15 Minutes of Grace where for about 15 minutes we share our experience in the gospel. Today I have a very special guest with me. His name is Akeem. Akeem, would you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Akeem Brett. I'm the youth pastor for the uh, Portland SDA Church out here in Maine and I, and I love it. Love it. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're very excited. I wanted to bring to you something that we've been learning over the past few weeks. It's the everlasting gospel. You know, I wasn't quite informed about what the everlasting gospel is. And today, for the next 15 minutes, I want to have Akeem, being the youth pastor of our church, to really explain a little bit about the everlasting gospel to you. So, Akeem, Please, go ahead. Tell us about the everlasting gospel and why is that important to us today? Sure, no problem. The everlasting gospel is very important for every soul today because the everlasting gospel is what God is going to use to save us. So we need to understand how we're going to be saved. And we find the everlasting gospel in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6 and 7. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, where the Bible plainly says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. So we see here that there's going to be an angel preaching the everlasting gospel to everyone on the earth. And when I was younger, I used to think, I would say, when is God going to send this angel? I used to look around and look at the sky and wonder when would God send this everlasting uh, gospel to go forth with the angel preaching. And I said, man, when is God going to send the angel? And then as I started studying the Bible, I realized that every time God has a messenger to give a message, his people, he will liken his people to an angel. We find this in Galatians 4. Galatians 4, Paul plainly says that he was an angel. Galatians 4, we know Paul, uh, who was preaching the gospel, writing books, and uh, he was an angel. Uh, we see this in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 14. It says this, it says, And my temptation, which was in my flesh, he despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. So Paul says, receive me as an angel of God. So isn't that clear that God likens his people? Paul said, I'm an angel. And an angel in the Greek means angelos. Angelos simply means a messenger. So God has last day messengers with messages of the everlasting gospel. Let's go again to Galatians chapter 1. Notice what it says here in Galatians chapter 1. And we will read from verse 6 all the way down to verse 8. Galatians chapter 1, 6 to 8. It says, I marvel that ye are soon removed from him that has called you unto the grace of Christ, unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or another angel from heaven, preach another gospel unto you, then that, he, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So he says, though we, or another angel from heaven, preach another gospel. So he's saying, though we, an angel from heaven, or another angel from heaven, preach another gospel. So isn't that clear that anyone who preaches God's message is an angel of God? Did you know that? Let's again look at 1 Samuel chapter 29. 1 Samuel chapter 29. We know the story of David, the man after God's own heart. The Bible says that David also was likened unto an angel. 1 Samuel chapter 29 and verse 9, the Bible says right here, And David said to Achish, But what have I done? What hast thou found in thy servants so long as I have been with thee unto this day? Uh, um, I'm reading verse 8, and we'll read verse 9. Unto this day, that I may not go fight against the enemies of the Lord the king. Now notice verse 9. Achish answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight, as an angel of God. So he looked at David. He says, you are good in my sight as an angel of God. He said, David, you're like an angel. So God's people, God's last day people represent the angels of God who accept the message of Jesus Christ and go forth to preach it. We saw it in Paul. We mm -hmm. saw it in, uh, in David. And also for us, if we proclaim this message 
of the everlasting gospel. We are that angel. Now notice the Bible says in Revelation 14, verse 6, we will just repeat it. It says, and I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. John sees the angel before the angel gives the message. That simply means that before we can give a message, preach a, preach a sermon, uh, teach a Bible study, we must live the message of Jesus Christ and his righteousness in our lives before we can give any message. And notice here that devil it has, this angel, has the everlasting gospel. What is the everlasting gospel? Wow. There are some people who don't know what the everlasting gospel is. We will go to the Bible for a definition of what the everlasting gospel is. Let's go to Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Understanding the everlasting gospel. It says right here in Romans 1, 16. Paul gives us a definition of what the everlasting gospel is. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So the gospel, the everlasting gospel, is the power of God unto salvation, or the power of God to save. Wow. So what is the everlasting gospel? It is the power of God to save. Now you must ask yourself the question, to save us from what? Because we need to be saved from something, right? <laughs> That's right. And um, if you're drowning and you're in a pool of water and you're drowning, you need to be saved from what? <laughs> from the water, from, yes. from drowning. Are you with me? If you're stranded on an island by yourself and there's tigers trying to eat you up, you need to be saved. You're saying, save me. What do you need to be saved from? Saved from the attacks of the Saved from the attacks. So we must be saved from something. So the, ever, so the God, let's, let's, let's uh, rephrase this. So the angel is a messenger of these last days, God's people, who will go forth to preach the everlasting gospel, which is the power of God to save us, but to save us from what? Matthew chapter 1 wow. and verse 21. The Bible lets us know what Jesus wants to save us from. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. It says, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from Indeed. their sins. So Jesus wants to save us from our sins. Wow. So the angel, God's last day people, has a message to go for to out the world, the everlasting gospel, which is the power of God to save us from our sins. Now, what is sin? Wow. Because if God wants to save me from my sin, I need to understand what, what sin, sin is. is. Is that clear? <laughs> oh yes, oh First yes. John chapter 3 and verse 4 tells us what sin is. We're going to make sure we have the Bible to understand what sin is. 1 John chapter 3, and the Bible says in verse 4, what sin is. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4, it says this, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgressing of the law. So sin is breaking the law of God. So the power of God to save me, the everlasting gospel, God wants to save me from breaking his law. So Jesus doesn't save us from the law, he saves us from sin. And what is sin? Wow. The breaking of God's law. That's amazing. What else does God want to save us from? What please, is sin? Please tell us. Please tell James us. chapter 4. Here's another definition of sin. James chapter 4. Notice this. I love this definition. It's so clear. James chapter 4 and verse 17. The Bible says here, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So that shows us that if I want, if I know that something is right and I don't do it, then I'm sinning. Wow. In, in today's world, we have something called age of accountability, where they say, oh, the child is only a child and he doesn't have to be, uh, know Jesus or surrender to Jesus. He's just a child. Let him alone. But then they'll say, oh, if you're older, God's going to hold you accountable. But the Bible says to him that knows no to do good, and do it and do it, it not timid as sin. So a little child can know a lot more than a 30-year-old on the street. And God says to that little child, to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. Is that clear? So God wants to save us. So let's go back. The, everlasting, the angel, God's last day people, has a message, the everlasting gospel, which is the power of God to save us from our sins, which is breaking the law of God and knowing to do what is right and refusing to do it. God wants to save us 
from doing wrong. So God wants to save us from breaking his law and doing wrong. But where can we find this power of the everlasting gospel? Where can we find Come it? Come on now, talk to me. And I suggest to you that we find it in the Bible. We find it at the cross. Amen. Let's notice this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's notice where we can find this everlasting gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17 and 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. The Bible says this, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, to preach the everlasting power, the God's power to save me from my sin. What is sin? Breaking the law and knowing to do what is wrong I and mean, what is right and not doing it. So it says, I came to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that hears foolishness. But unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. I want to say the power of God to save. Wow. So the cross is the power of God to save us from our sins. Wow. Because at the cross, we have grace. Are you with me? Because sin, the wages of sin is death. Where I should have died. Where you should have died. Wow. Where the cameraman should have died. We all should have died. But because Jesus took our place at the cross, he took our sins. And he died for our sins. And saves us from our sins at the cross. For the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the Bible makes it clear that at the cross, grace meets the sinner. Where sin abounds, grace abound much more, more abounds. So this everlasting gospel is a gospel of grace at the cross. Wow. Isn't that a beautiful wow. lesson? So the angel, God's people, preaches a message of the everlasting gospel, the power of God to save us from our sins, which is breaking the law of God and knowing what is right and not doing. God wants to save us from that. So we will do what is right and also keep his law. But I'll notice something. Some people say, I'm saved by grace. Yes. Talk and they're fornicating. I'm saved by grace. And I'm stealing. I'm saved by grace. And I'm committing adultery. I'm saved by grace. And I'm cheating on my taxes. I'm saved by grace. Are you really saved by grace? Let's notice something about grace before we begin to bring this message to a close. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. I'm sorry, yes, Titus chapter 2, correct text. The Bible says in Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to verse 13. Notice this. It says, for the grace of God. Mm. It says, for the grace of God that had appeared, that bringeth salvation, hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So the Bible says that grace teaches me how to live holy today. So though I was a sinner yesterday, God's grace forgives me, accepts me, and also teaches me how to live for Jesus today, tomorrow, wow. and for the rest of my life. So I can't be saved by grace See, we're all students of grace. Do you see it? Yes. It teaches us how to live holy. It teaches us how to be like Jesus. It teaches us how to be more like him. And after we have received God's saving grace, God then gives us his grace to, his empowering grace to live the life now, let that me ask he has you. Now, us let, to live. Now, yes. now, let me ask you a question. Sure. You know, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, now that I'm a Christian, I'm supposed to live this way. I'm supposed to dress this way. I'm supposed to eat this way. Mm -hmm. How does grace play a role in that? Well, if there is no grace in the Christian life, well, we will begin to think that I have to, I have to, I have to. But when we receive God's grace and we realize that God loves us so much, out of love for him, it won't be duty anymore. It will be love service. So because we love God, because he has redeemed us, it won't be I have to, it'll be praise God, I get to praise him this way. I get to dress this way. I get to talk this way. I, it's a privilege. It's, a, it's not a duty, it's a privilege. God's grace in the Christian life changes the life. It's his love. It's, 
It's his tender, compassionate wow. uh, uh, life, uh, life of love that he gives to the Christian for us to express in our gratitude towards him. Wow. So is that what it means, things that I used to, things that I do, I don't do it no more? That's is that right. what that's all about? That's right. That's all it's about. God, and you know what? God took the, uh, uh, Israel out of Egypt and then gave them the law. He redeemed them. He saved them, took them out of Egypt, saved them from slavery, from bondage, and then said, now, here's the law. Their law, the law was just an expression of saying, Lord, thank you for saving me. Now I want to live the way you want me to live. Wow. So is it, so grace affords you the opportunity to obey God? Yes. Oh, yes. Grace empowers us to obey the Lord. Wow. That is amazing. Folks, you heard it here. If you want to hear more about this, then you have to see this man in person. He's definitely God's messenger sent to us and teaching us the power of grace in our lives. You see, we, became, we can become so legalistic in our thinking that we have to do this and it's by our own efforts and it's by our own uh, duties why we meet the requirement. And so many people don't want to come to church today because they feel like they're not good enough. Hmm. Like they, you know, they'll never be able to change. Hmm. I've been living this way for all my life. I've been an addict all my life. I've been this all my life. How can you expect me to now live a life? I've done too many wrong things. God will never be able to forget to forgive me. My cup is full. Hmm. What do you say to, to a person like that? Well, I just want to say Titus chapter 2 verse 11. It says, for the grace of God had appeared unto all men. We don't have to earn God's grace. We don't have to work for God's grace. We don't have to save money to pay for God's grace. God's grace, what the Bible says, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. That we all can receive this grace right now. Jesus gave it freely. It's a free gift. And by faith, when I exercise my faith in Jesus Christ, trusting in him for my salvation, Jesus says, he says, all can come to me. Sinners, saints, everyone. As a matter of fact, he came to this world to save sinners. That's right. He says the, the righteous doesn't need a, a doctor but the sick. That's right. So, so in other words, sin and our messed up life is the actual ingredient for grace. That's right. What? Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> no, 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 I feel like I have hope. Man. Amen. Amen. Because, you know, for a long time I was, you know, my mind was really loaded down with the fact that if I sin, mm -hmm. I feel like I dropped right back to where I started. Like I have to climb up that hill again. I felt like I was knocked off the ladder. Mm -hmm. I was way up there with God, but I sinned in my mind, I sinned in my thoughts and my attitude action, and I dropped right off the ladder and then I have to climb. And it's discouraging. But it's good to know that grace cleans up mm -hmm. and it keeps us going. Amen. Wow, that's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, my Facebook friends and buddies, you want to hear more? If you live in the Portland area, you want to come by 92 Allen Avenue. It's the White Memorial Church. It's a Seventh-day Adventist church. You want to come to the White Memorial uh, Church, Seventh-day Adventist Church, on Allen Avenue, 92 Allen Avenue. Uh, this is a little bit off Forest Avenue by the, um, the, the McDonald's over there. And just make that right. That. That is actually Allen Avenue. You'll see the church on the right-hand side coming down. You want to come Monday nights, I think it is? Yep, Monday nights at 6 o'clock. We will be having our Bible study. So we're going to have a PowerPoint. We're just going to go through some Bible studies. We're invited to come Monday night, 6 p.m. You're invited to come to our Bible study. Oh, you, you, you don't, definitely don't want to miss this because it's going to be important. I want to hear more about this grace because... For a long time, I didn't really quite understand how grace works. I always felt like you have to earn. There's something that you have to do. You have to earn that spot in, in God's heart. But it's amazing to know that while we were sinners, he died in that condition to clean us up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you can hear more of Akeem. I definitely will have him on my program, 15 Minutes of Grace. And you definitely want to hear more about this. So if you can't make it on Mondays, you will be doing yourself a dis justice because you know he said the power of the gospel the gospel is not only for you but it's for your children and for all who are far off so you need to hear it in order to pass it on to your children and all who are far off from akeem and myself and from 15 minutes of grace have a wonderful and blessed day god bless you until next time bye